I'm Ian from CQ Solar. Um, my, my general qualification is uh, electrical engineer. Um, I've been engineering all my life and my specialty is uh, power systems and control systems. And that's a bit of a unique combination because um, not many engineers have a common, of combination of power and control. Normally it's power and electronics, but not power and control. I spent my career essentially in power systems and control systems. And um, most of my career has been helping businesses um, build new things. Initially, when I heard that sol uh, um, pho uh, photodiodes, which are the basic, basic element of solar panels, were being connected up so that they were connected in, in a series uh, connection, I thought to myself, well, that's really engineering insanity because there's so many issues with, with, with photodiodes. So essentially, um, what you need to do is, is connect a piece of electronics onto each panel, which, which uh, corrects those problems. And one of, one, of the th one of the major things it does, it, it isolates um, mathematically um, each panel from its neighbours. So each panel can put electricity into, it can pr produce its power without um, affecting its neighbours. It's a bit like a, a, bit like a, a single lane road. When you connect a solar panel array up, you've got very much like a single lane road and the, and the slowest car on the road dictates the speed of the traffic. If you've got a solar array and one panel is, is, is broken or aged, it affects the whole array. In, and that means you decrease power in the whole array. What this little piece of electronics does, it creates a multi-lane road mathematically. It is still electrically connected as if it were in a series mode, the same as solar array, but it mathematically creates a, a multi-lane road so each panel can can provide its power to the to the to the, the to the grid or to the load independently so that means that if you have a panel that's that's, that's aged or broken or shaded uh, so it's not getting the going not getting the sun not producing the the, the, the electrical power then um, the, the good producing panels um, leave the leave the a lot of a lot of power um, in the panel, which is converted to heat. So this gets all of the power from all of the panels and le doesn't uh, leave any in the panels themselves. And for um, for a normal for a normal array, you can get up to twenty five percent extra power from uh, an aged uh, solar array. For example, a solar farm that's five years or more older, you can quite quite easily get up to 25% extra power. So it affects the bottom line, it increases the bottom line of solar farms. It decreased costs because we're able to collect the data on each panel. We're able to uh, find faults that we can't find um, easily without the, without the data. Um, in, in solar arrays, if one panel is broken, the whole array gets discarded, gets taken off and put into landfill. So this, the, if we know which panel is broken, we can then take that particular panel out. We, we're not putting all of the rest of them in landfill. So we, we, we're actually decreasing our landfill um, waste by up to 90% up to on, on, sol on solar panels by putting this device in. I've come from an e-commerce background. So my entire career has been getting the infrastructure for e-commerce working. So that means the security side of it, the credit card side of it, the performance side of it, the auto scaling, managing loads that go like up and down. So essentially I'm gonna be taking that infrastructure and applying it to this side of things. And the data here, so we need to have data streams that come in every second and we need to then manage that. So from there, that every second data, we can then analyze, we can put through artificial intelligence maps and come out with some really meaningful results. So we can come out with things like, 
your panel's dead and we'll tell them which panel's dead. We can say which cable's dead. We can say, uh, we can say that the, uh, that it was a rainy day. <laughs> we can say a lot of things, but we're not really sure what we're going to find out of the data. The data's got, there's, it's so high quality data that we're not sure what we'll find yet once we start putting it through some artificial intelligence stuff. So we haven't done that side of things yet, but the infrastructure side, it, we, that's what we're working on at the moment. Well, this interface is actually the engineering interface. So this is not going to be a publicly available one, but it does show the same data. Essentially, the very top red line is the power output we're getting with our devices. The one just below that, there'll be an orange line. And that orange line is the mathematical equivalent of having a single MPPT or a single maximum PowerPoint tracker on the, on the line. So that will give you approximately what you'd get from without having our stuff on it. So this, that's a comparative difference. The lines underneath it, that's each individual panel each in, at each second. So that'll give you the data at each second from each panel, which as far as we know, is not a, a you, you just can't collect that on solar farms right now. So this is the first time anyone's seen that data. The dips when someone puts even one hand over a panel, you'll see a dip of the entire panel. Now that might be 10%, might be 20%. It really comes down to how much you're shading that light, but that comes down to the photodiodes being in series. So as they go in series across the, the cells of the panel, if one of those cells is completely off, it essentially takes the whole panel off. So you see that in the data, the, you see little dips when something even shades it slightly. So if you have a tree that slightly shades it, you have these dips in the data that comes up, you know, that go, that go down quite significantly. So when you shade one panel, there's a difference between the output of, when you have one, one panel that's shaded, it brings down the power of the entire array. And the difference is the difference between that low voltage of that panel and the highest panel, it'll be roughly in between that. So it'll drag down the, the voltage quite, quite significantly and the power quite significantly. So with these devices, that doesn't happen. So instead of dragging down the entire array by 30%, you take one panel down by its, its, its uh, difference and that's it. So you're only taking one power as opposed to 20. And then when, because we can see that, you can also see when panels, yeah, which panels are damaged and actually disable a single panel. If you need to, you can take that out of circuit and have the rest of them just work as normal. There's a lot of remote working that you can do with this. So from the remote side of things, we can say, we can, we can turn off the system, we can do testing to see whether or not we're at the maximum power point. We can actually see whether or not we're collecting the most amount of power out of the solar farm. We, we, we can do a test on that. And we're the first people that can actually do that test. So that'll give you this, this W curve in the line. So we call it the, the W test. We can do quite a lot of other updates, but one thing that we won't do over the line, the, over, the, over the air, is ever update devices. Because we're talking about solar, solar farm devices and high voltage and high current devices, you really don't want to be updating that over the, over the air. There's, there's a range of methods that are currently used in solar farms, and those are things like putting drones in the air with infrared cameras to try and find out which, which uh, cell is damaged or which panel is damaged. And essentially, they're, they're, they're getting some results out of that, but the, the, the best result you can get is measuring the data to see if it's damaged. And that's exactly what we're doing. I'm seeing that in the next two to three years, we really want to make an impact on solar farm recycling, solar farm, because at the moment, one of the big problems with solar farms is there's a huge amount of waste. So there's a waste reduction side of things. We'd like to see this within at least a couple of solar farms in Australia. And ideally, we'd like to showcase that for worldwide um, distribution, probably within about two years. In the next 10 years, we really do see that this is going to be um, a prominent player in the industry. And if, if you're not using this with older solar farms in 10 years, I'd say that you're just not going to be competitive in the, in the, in the energy market.
It actually uh, will change the way in which solar farms are built. And that, that comes from a number of people we've spoken to that are, that are very, um, uh, that are very knowledgeable about solar farms. Um, one big solar farm manufacturer said, if this does what we say it does, it will change the, the world solar farm, uh, how we build solar farms. Be because, it, because it adds um, a better return on investment and it cuts costs and it cuts, cuts waste con considerably. It's not just a little tiny bit. It's considerable um, changes to all of those parameters of solar installations. It, it basically is, is a game changer in solar power. Absolute game changer. It's a bit, it's a bit like um, comparing um, the horse and cart in the 1900s to the, to the car in, the, in 1913. It took 13 years basically to, for all horse and carts to be completely replaced by motor cars because the technology was so, so uh, much more convenient, so much more economical. Um, this, this, has, this is the same sort of situation for solar farms. This will change the way solar farms are built and large solar installations are managed. It also changes the life of the solar farm because um, instead of a solar farm having a 20 year life, we can ex this can extend the life of a solar farm to 30, 35 years, which, um, which, which, which are complete game changers in the industry.